just mention one more uh, block cipher, and just very briefly here. Um, so DES is actually pretty simple for a block cipher, but you know you see that wiring diagram; it's kind of intimidating. AES is not simple. Okay, it's pretty involved. You've been writing the code for it's a substantial chunk of code to write. So I just want to show that it is possible to actually have a truly simple block cipher algorithm. Okay, here's the, as simple as it gets. So this tiny encryption algorithm uses a 64-bit block, same as DES, but a 128-bit key. Now, in the description here, everything's assumed to be a 32-bit word. Okay, so all the arithmetic is assumed to be conducted on 32-bit words. So everything's mod 2 to 32, however you want to say that. Okay, the, the trade-off here, and you can sort of think of this as being at the opposite extreme from AES. Okay, AES, they take a very complex round function, and so they only need a few rounds in order to accomplish what they need to do. Here we're going to use a very weak round function, but then we're going to have to use it a lot of times okay, to get, you know, get what we need done. Okay, well there you go. You can write this code, okay? Ten lines of pseudocode to encrypt, okay? Using a, a T. So again, everything's a 32-bit word, okay? So four 32-bit words, that's the 128-bit key. Uh, we split the plain text, 64 bits into two 32-bit words. Uh, we have this magic number here. Cryptographers hate magic numbers, so you have to tell them where it came from. Uh, I think it's like the bits that show up in the square root of five. <laughs> so it comes from somewhere, so you're not supposed to be suspicious when you see that, because, I don't know, it's not something NSA chose to make it weaker. That's the point. Okay, then you do these 32 rounds, you uh, do some shifting and XOR and all this weird stuff. You do it to the left half, you do it to the right half. You do that 32 times, you end up with something that we're going to call ciphertext, 64 bits of ciphertext. Well, okay, fine. But can we decrypt? Can you decrypt this thing? Well, if it's a Feistel cipher, the answer is easy, right? You just you know you can decrypt any Feistel cipher. So is this thing a Feistel cipher? No, why not? Okay, it's not doing an XOR. I mean, if it was doing like an XOR here, you know, new left half, I mean, new right half is equal, you know, the XOR of something. It's not, okay? It's doing an addition, not an XOR. So can we decrypt? It's not so obvious, actually, that you can, but you can actually write a you know, nice picture here and diagram that sort of illustrates that you can decrypt if you work at it long enough. And the code looks something like this. Okay, so it's very similar. You just have to get the setup right. But instead of addition, you subtract, okay? Okay, now this cipher, it's not a Feistel cipher, but I would say it's almost a Feistel cipher, <laughs> right? Instead of XOR, you're doing addition and subtraction. That's really the difference between this thing being a Feistel cipher. Now another thing to notice is you do 32 rounds here, but each round you're actually doing something to both halves. So if you sort of tried to compare this to DES, this really would be sort of analogous to 64 rounds in DES, because you're doing something to each half each time. So it's a lot of rounds, okay, compared to DES. But the actual round function is really simple, right? Just a few additions, you know, shifts and XORs. And if we did chapter six, which, you know, I used to do when it was just 265, that's kind of the biggest change. That's the cryptanalysis stuff. If we did that, the trade-off here between sort of, you know, the complexity of each round and the number of rounds would be really clear, I think. But we just don't have time to do all that stuff. So. Uh, okay, so finally, T cipher. It's almost a Feistel cipher, all right? Uh, just because it uses the plus and minus instead of the XOR. It is very simple, uh, easy to implement. It's reasonably fast. I don't think it's quite as fast as DES. It's certainly not as fast as AES. But, you know, given how easy it is to code, it certainly has its uses. There is, uh, people have come up with some sort of related key attack on T. What's a related key attack again?
Well, it's a kind of an obscure sort of attack, okay? It says, okay, I have two keys. I don't know what they are, but I know they're related in some very special way. Then maybe I can get an attack that will break these two messages. In most applications, it's not really a concern, okay? So you could use this in a lot of applications where, you know, related key would really not be an issue. But if it does concern you, people have uh, developed a slight extension of the key algorithm which eliminates the potential for that particular attack. It's just a little more complex, so it uh, may be worth doing. There's also a, a much simplified, I mean, a little bit simplified version of T, which uh, people use just to illustrate attacks. It's known to be weak. It's just a nice, simple cipher to illustrate attacks on uh, block ciphers. <coughs> 